Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of Who's This Guy? The only show on YouTube brave enough to tackle the subjects that really matter, like racing games from 17 years ago. Really? Important. Does anyone else miss the golden age of arcade racing games? When you could drift around a corner while boosting at Jesus Christ someone save me miles per hour? Or shoot shockwaves out of your Land Rover? Or if you go back far enough, do a freaking reverse 360 drift the wrong way around a corner? Maybe you don't miss this stuff though, maybe you're a sim head and you love the feeling of realistic grip. Fiddling around with tuning setups, appreciating exquisitely detailed air conditioning vents. I kind of fall into both camps, I love burnout and flat out and oh my god I kind of like to full auto, someone help me. Help the man. But I also love Gran Turismo and Forza, not that one, and Project Cars, even if I'm not good at it, I'm very sorry. If you're anything like me and you can get down with either sim or arcade style racing, well there was one series in particular from the early 2000s that was mixing the sim racing chocolate sauce with the arcade racing ice cream into a drifty delicious sundae. Yes, on today's episode we are looking back at the late, the great Project Gotham racing series. At long last, I have an excuse to talk about Batman. Hiya. Who are you? I don't know, you didn't give me a name in the script. Sorry. Listen pal, uh, Batman isn't in these games. Ooh. I didn't know what to tell you. Thanks for letting me know. That's okay. Anonymous Scottish man. Okay, see ya pal. I have to be honest guys, about 80% of my material was related to Batman. I wore my Batman socks. <laughs> So, uh, let's play the montage and hopefully by the time it's done, I'll have figured something out. Roll it. first one. So here we find ourselves friends with Project Gotham Racing 1. And this is really impressive for the first entry in a series. It's like when Bizarre Creations sat down and made their design doc for the first game. The very first bullet point was fun. These cars are so drifty and slippery, but in a really, really good way. And it all feeds into the kudos system. Kudos, kudos, quinoa. Anything you do on track gives you points and rewards you for doing fancy shit. I know that this is kind of commonplace in games these days, but I feel like the Project Gotham series was a bit of a front runner in this regard. For the first 15 minutes or so that I was playing this game, I was sliding into walls, hitting other cars, instinctively trying to hit the Y button to rewind before remembering, oh, so I'm not playing Forza, this is Project Gotham Racing. But once you get the hang of the controls, this is seriously fun. This is really helped by, I don't know if I would call this good AI, but it's really fun to race against. They're super aggressive and they will try to beat the crap out of you any opportunity that they get. They make mistakes all the time, they bunch up around corners. In terms of what you're actually doing in in the first game, it is a lot of street racing, but that's also broken up by one-on-ones, time trials, cone challenges, where you're challenged to drive through cones. I don't understand. There's also this cool system in the first game that I don't think is in any of the others where if you're feeling particularly confident going into an event, you can apply these jokers, which gives you a chance to double your kudos. <laughs> Joker's good. It's kind of a cool way to back yourself. The other great thing about the kudos system, and I mentioned this in my Need for Speed Shift reviews, one of the things that I've always loved in any racing game is when it gives you more to do than just race. There are so many driving games you play where once you get out to first place, you don't really have anything to do other than continue going around corners doing laps until the race is over. So bored. I love it in games like Need for Speed Shift that give you race objectives, you're constantly accruing points, and the kudos system is a really great way of implementing that. Especially when the kudos economy is the beating heart of this game. It's what you use to unlock all your new cars. You find yourself in races in first place doing some crazy shit on the track that might jeopardize your position because you're trying to build up kudos. It's a really cool risk reward system. I'm feeling a little dangerous. For me though, I think the real star of the show with Project Gotham Racing 1 is actually the tracks themselves. They're all based on real world locations. They've got so much personality. There's the hilly San Francisco streets, Tokyo, New York. While I'm talking about New York, I love the little details in this game like the steam vents on the Times Square track. There's just all these little touches all over this thing that give you the feeling the developers were throwing everything into this first game. Night racing, wet weather, all these different racing types. What more could you want? I will say it's a little strange that this first game is the only one in the entire series that runs at 60 frames a second. It's even more surprising because I think the visuals in the first game hold up really well. It's got this nice subtle lighting that can occasionally be quite dramatic. All the weather effects look really good and they actually add really cool variety to the tracks as well. Sometimes you'll 
will race around San Francisco and there'll be this fog that's rolled in. Before I move on to the second game, I do need to address the fact that you might feel like these cars look a little skinny. Aw, thanks. I played all four of these games on my Xbox 360. I don't know why this game runs in this aspect ratio, but to me, it looks slightly squashed. There's also crazy slowdown. Sometimes when you're heading up this hill on the San Francisco track, the game literally starts to run in slow motion. I noticed the same kind of performance with the first Forza Motorsport when I played that on my 360 via backwards compatibility. It's pretty disappointing to see that Microsoft hasn't put more effort into making these classic games that are so beloved more playable. All of these issues are related to the backwards compatibility. So for the purpose of this video, we're just going to completely ignore them. We bury our heads in sand. Chapter two, the temple of doom. I feel like it's impossible for me to be objective about this game because the recreation of Sydney in Project Gotham Racing 2 is fucking amazing. Winner is Sydney. I worked right here. This pub here, I had lunch here all the time. Hey, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Sydney isn't the only impressive location here. All of the new cities are really cool, like Washington. Although I can't actually vouch for how accurate these are. So uh, if you live on this street or this street or this street or this street, can you let me know below if this is uh, as accurate as the Sydney one? The Florence track reminded me a lot of Assassin's Creed 2. <laughs> they've really dialed in the handling model. The second game feels just about perfect to me in terms of arcade racing. These cars still very much want to slide out, but you feel slightly more capable of just riding that line. And the crazy fierce AI comes back as well. I think it's even angrier in the second game, but this time around you can see them locking up their brakes and you can even pressure them into making errors. He made this mistake and then I was so impressed by that AI that I crashed into the same wall. Dumbass. The cones are back again to challenge us further. These cones are laughing at me. The weather effect make a return as well and they're just as impressive if not more impressive this time around we still have our nice subtle lighting it is a shame that again this game suffers from backwards compatibility emulation issues i found that i would get black screens on the car select screen it would freeze intermittently here and there and there's also some weird stuff going on with the shadows but again this is all just about the backwards emulation so we're just going to ignore it all right, Sharon, now do me. Basically, the second game takes everything the first game does so well and just amps it up to a whole nother level. The only downfall, in my opinion, is that it does get that bump down to 30 FPS, which is unfortunate, but hey, what are you going to do? Chapter 3, Drake's Deception. I'm pretty sure this was the first game I ever played on an Xbox 360. I remember at the time being absolutely blown away by the way this thing looked, and it still does look really good today, but I also remember thinking that it just felt like there was something missing. There was something a little lifeless, a little soulless about the way this game felt. Going back to it today, I got that same feeling again. It reminds me of those situations where you have a sports franchise and the first game that comes out on a new console has a bunch of features ripped out of it because the developers were spending most of their time just trying to get this working on the new console and trying to impress the player base with fancy new graphics and technology. And that very much feels like what's going on with the third game. There's absolutely no weather effects. You gotta be kidding me! We still have night racing but gone is fog gone is rain it really makes this game feel significantly less varied than the previous two there's also no more location intros like there were in the previous two games and i think it's quite telling because although these tracks look really impressive they do feel a little bit like they're lacking some soul they've lost a little bit of the atmosphere and character from the previous two games on the verge of squandering everything there are definitely good things to say about this game it still retains that really awesome handling model the kudos system is in full effect again I like the way that you rank up here and that you earn badges for your achievements on and off the track. I love the new garage feature where every time you get a new car, you place it in a garage, unlock more garages, build up your car collection, and you can walk around and look at all the vehicles that you've accrued. Although, when I first started, there are no cars in your garage. Oh no, not again. This is also the first time in the series we get a cockpit view, which introduces a really crazy sense of speed. And this game is also really colorful, especially considering it came out in the early stages of the Xbox 360's life, when everything else coming out around it had been dropped into a vat of gravy. It's just brown and water. It has really beautiful lighting. Although I will say sometimes this game has a few of those moments where improved fidelity results in decreased readability. These cones, for example, I think are so fucking difficult to see. I definitely wouldn't say the third game is a bad game at all. It still drives really, really well, but it's lacking the variety of the previous two games. And it does feel like the developers were so focused on making this flashy and impressing with the technology that they forgot 
got to infuse it with a bit of the heart that made the first two games so special. Chapter four, the Goblet of Fire. And now we come to the big one, the title that I've seen most people say online is their favorite entry in the series, Project Gotham Racing 4. This game is pretty awesome. First of all, and like maybe no one gives a shit about this, but I think the menus in this game are amazing. The fourth game also brings weather back to the series, yes! but even better, it's dynamic weather this time around. We no longer have a standard rain preset. It can be drizzling all the way through to lightning storms. And we also get snow for the first time, which not only looks amazing, but it drastically affects the handling and introduces a new challenge. However, I think because they introduced the icy roads into this game, they had to dial back on how slippery the cars feel, which basically means when you're driving on a dry surface in this game, the cars are way grippier than they were in the previous three. In most of the vehicles here, I found it really difficult to get my car going sideways around a corner without using the handbrake. I love the feeling in the previous three games of just throwing your car into a corner and having to control the power and the drift out of there. And you can still achieve that to a certain extent in number four using the handbrake or if you're on one of the icy roads or in the snow or in the wet. But it just feels like it lost a little bit of that dangerous edge when it came to dry road racing. Don't get me wrong, these cars still control beautifully. I just would have preferred it if they were a little bit slipperier. In fact, if they were a little bit slippery, I think I'd say this was a borderline perfect game. I mean, it looks amazing for starters. Some of the skies are just beautiful. The weather effects look incredible. The lighting is really subtle, but striking. I also really like the way the career is structured here as well and the variety of events on offer. And perhaps most amazingly of all, they introduce motorcycles and they're fun. You're kidding. I don't know about anyone else, but I usually hate the way motorbikes control in games, but they nailed it here. Motorcycles and cars shouldn't race with each other in real life. I'm like, why? Oh, uh, yep, uh, I get it. I will say I found the bike helmet cam both really cool and completely nauseating. Couldn't play in this view for more than about five seconds ago. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I feel sick. The fourth game basically just takes everything that the previous three did really well and does it even better. My issues with the handling aside, and they're not really issues because these cars and motorbikes still control really well. I just wish it felt a little bit more dangerous. Let's get nuts. Chapter five and the winner is... You really can't go wrong with any of these games. Games, I do think the third is the weakest. It's just missing a little bit of the soul that's present in the other three. And then for me, it's almost a dead heat between one, two, and four. One has this great spirit behind it and you can feel the developers throwing everything at it. And they really knocked it out of the park on the first attempt. The fourth game really feels like this triumphant culmination of everything that the series had done so well up to that point and introducing great new elements as well. I think I'm have to go with number two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And yes, I'm probably super biased because of this Sydney level. Although if I was going to nitpick, Luna Park should be more like here, not here. Sydney aside, I think the second game has the best tracks in the entire series. And I also think it has the most enjoyable handling model. It was really cool to go back to the start of the series and play all the way through and go, holy shit, this series really is amazing. It makes me miss the arcade racing days of old where we could get such a wide variety of games. Sometimes I think modern racing games are so focused on wowing us with technology that they've kind of forgotten to make themselves fun. This was a nice reminder of that era when it felt like developers were more focused on the enjoyment enjoyment of racing rather than the emulation of it. But these games are awesome. Thanks Bizarre Creations and here's to Project Gotham Racing. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts below on the Project Gotham Racing series. I had a great time. I think my plan moving forward is I'm going to keep making the Who's This Guy videos so I can tackle individual games and game series. And I'll also continue making the Not A Video Game Analysis videos in order to tackle bigger topics. So uh, yeah, let me know what you'd like to see. If you've enjoyed this video today on the Project Gotham Racing series, I think you'll probably enjoy this one here just as much, if not more. So check that out if you've got a room. My name's Sam. That's all I've got for today. And I'll see you soon.